It's been a while since I've posted a woodworking video, so I thought I'd better get off my bum and uh, do one this time. So we're going to make a nice easy project which would be an excellent present for someone, a uh, person who has everything. We're going to make a wooden box in the shape of a maple leaf. Don't need any plans, just some timber and a scroll saw and Bob's your uncle and the project can be done within a couple of hours. Let's get to it. This is the finished product that we're aiming for. As I said, this requires no plans. I just found an outline of a maple leaf on the internet that I liked, put it into Word and printed it out. Now I'm just hand drawing some veins on the leaf to give it a little bit of extra interest. Now I'm gluing my drawing to a piece of quarter inch or six mil timber. This can be any old stuff that you've got lying around or even ply. So I give it a good old spray on the back of the picture and then paste it onto the board. I need a top and a bottom piece out of this same timber so I'm going to cut the top piece first and then once I've cut the top piece out just lay it on top so I've got another piece the same size. These pieces form the top and the bottom of the box. I'm using a piece of 25mm or 1 inch timber for the centre of the box but I couldn't find anything wide enough lying around in the shed so I've glued a couple of pieces together. I've just butt glued them. With the glue dry on the timber I need to cut a piece the same size as the top and bottom pieces. With the three pieces all the same size, I just stack them together and then use some clear packing tape to tape them all together so that they don't move around. This is because the first step is to cut out the outline of the maple leaf. The scroll saw struggles with an inch and a half material, so I'm using a number 12 blade and I'm cutting quite slowly. I won't make you watch me cut this whole thing out in real time. So here it is sped up. Alrighty then, that's the hardest part of the job done. I can push the three pieces out of the scrap and I've got the beginnings of a box. I'm leaving the front pattern on the front piece but I'm pulling the tape off the back. Just so I don't confuse the pieces I'm putting a bit of a mark on the back of each piece as I move along to make sure I know how it goes back together. Uh, not that it's impossible to work that out without that, but I'm a bit anal retentive that way.
Now it's time to cut out the centre of the box. So I just freehand around the edge about you know six mil or so um, just so that I can follow the line when I cut it out with the scroll saw. I'll need a blade locating hole this time because I'm cutting out just in the centre. Still using that number 12 blade. I can now cut out the centre piece. Not nearly as hard now because I'm only cutting one inch rather than one and a half. By the way, because we're cutting out um, inch and inch and a half type thickness material, it's a good idea to choose softwood for this project. Okay, that's all done. Now I can just push that centre piece out and bin it. Now it's time to cut out the leaf veins. Again, I need a locating hole for the blade. The front's only a quarter inch, so I'm using a number five blade. It's a lot easier to get around those sharp corners as well. Now the veins are cut out, I can take off the pattern from the front. And again I'm just marking the back of this. The next step is to make the locating piece for the lid. I'm using 8th inch or 3mm ply for this. I've got a bit of scrap that's already got a bit of uh, varnish on it as well. So I make sure that I have the front face of the inside of the box sitting down on my piece and then I just draw an outline with a pencil that I can cut out on the scroll saw. A bit more fast forwarding to cut out this piece as well. I'm going to use super glue to glue all this stuff together because I can't be bothered waiting for wood glue to dry. I've found in the past that this does the job just fine. So with the glue on the locator piece around the edge and a few daubs on the back of the front face of the box as well. We're ready to assemble it all. Trying not to get super glue on my fingers in the process. The super glue still allows me a few seconds to locate the pieces correctly so that they're all perfect. And then all I have to do is hold it down for a few seconds until the glue dries. With all that done, I can now glue the base to the centre of the box. Again, I'm using super glue for this, but you can use wood glue, of course, or any glue that you prefer. Again, I've got a few seconds to locate the piece exactly before the super glue dries. Righto, all the pieces are together. Here's the finished box. Look at that, fits perfectly, looks fantastic. Well, not finished yet. Next, I'm going to add my maker's mark. So I heat up this little branding iron with my mark on it. My daughter bought this for me. 
years ago. Very nice. So when I think I've got it hot enough, I just use a bit of scrap. And yep, there we go. That's fine. So now I can do it on the actual project. Yep, that looks good. A bit of vanity, but I like it. I'm using some orange oil just to finish it off. I like that natural timber look rather than a glossy or even a semi-gloss look that you would get with a varnish. And oiling is way easier. And it leaves a very pleasant citrusy type smell. You've probably realised that this process can be used for any sort of shape. So go ahead and make one for yourself. Your friends and relatives will be amazed at your skill. And it's a great present for those who already have everything.